Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. We're talking about the peptide information you need to know to start your week in less than five minutes. Today, I want to go over cerebral lysin and its effect on cognitive health. So cerebral lysin is a unique peptide-based drug that has garnered much attention for its potential brain-boosting effects. Now, I want to go over what it exactly is, understanding how it works, and the potential benefits it offers in optimizing brain function in this podcast. So what exactly is cerebrolysin? Cerebrolysin is a nootropic drug developed and manufactured by Everpharma, a pharmaceutical company that's based in Austria and in Germany. It's a mix of peptides original, originally derived from pig brain tissues and processed to create a peptide-based solution that's rich in neurotrophic factors. Now, these neurotrophic factors are essential proteins that support the growth, survival, and maintenance of neurons, which aids in their communication and overall brain health health. You should note that the FDA has proved its use as an orphan drug for use in rare disorders like ALS and frontotemporal dementia. However, it's widely used in over 70 countries. So how does cerebrolysin work? Its exact mechanism is not entirely understood, but it is believed to work through the multiple pathways to promote brain health and cognitive function. So it has neurotrophic effects. Now, the presence of neurotrophic factors in cerebrolysin stimulates neuronal growth, maintenance, and repair. These factors aid in the formation of new connections between neurons, enhancing synaptic plasticity, and improving overall brain connectivity. It also has antioxidant properties. So cerebrolysin has demonstrated that by neutralizing harmful free radicals in the brain that can cause damage to cells and impair cognitive function, it reduces oxidative stress and supports brain cells longevity and health. It also has anti-apoptotic effects. So apoptosis is a process of programmed cell death. Cerebral lysin has shown anti-apoptotic properties, protecting neurons from premature cell death and preserving brain tissue. It also has anti-inflammatory actions. So chronic inflammation in the brain can be detrimental to cognitive function. Cerebral lysin exerts anti-inflammatory effects, potentially mitigating neuroinflammation and its negative impact on the brain. It also helps with enhanced blood flow. So improved cerebral blood flow is crucial for delivering essential nutrients like oxygen to your brain cells. Cerebral lysin has been shown to increase blood flow, supporting the brain's metabolic demands. So what are the benefits of cerebral lysin? Cognitive enhancement is number one. So cerebral lysin's neurotrophic effects contribute to improved memory, learning, and overall cognitive performance. And it's particularly beneficial for individuals experiencing cognitive decline due to either aging or certain neurodegenerative conditions. It also has neuroprotective effects. So the drug's antioxidant and anti-apoptotic properties help protect brain cells from damage and death, potentially slowing down the progression of neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. It's also used for stroke recovery. So cerebral lysin has shown promise in aiding in stroke recovery by supporting neuronal repair and enhancing blood flow. It also may help in re rehabilitating neurological function after a person has a stroke. It's also used in traumatic brain injury for support, or TBI. In the cases of TBI, cerebral license neuroprotective effects may assist in reducing damage to brain tissue and promoting recovery. It can also be helped with mood enhancement. Now, there are some studies that suggest cerebral lysin may have these mood enhancing effects, which potentially help individuals with mood disorders or depression, but more research is needed. So how do you take cerebral lysin? Cerebral lysin is typically administered through intramuscular or IV injections. Now, the dosage and duration of treatment is going to vary depending on the individual's conditions and the physician's assessment. It's also typically given over two to four weeks, and repeat doses are based on clinical response and underlying diagnoses. So in this context, we can see it being used for stroke patients, TBI patients, vascular dementia, and Alzheimer's disease. You can sort of think of this for clinical syndromes that contribute to brain inflammation and oxidative stress. A question that we get often is, is cerebral license safe to take? 
As with any medication, cerebral lysin may cause side effects in some individuals. The most common side effects include headache, dizziness, sweating, and nausea. Mild allergic reactions at the injection site can also happen, and serious adverse effects are rare, but if you experience any of these after administration, immediately tell your physician, and most likely since you'll be getting the IV infusion in a hospital or an outpatient center, you'll have medical staff right there on hand. So who shouldn't take cerebral lysin? Because it's made of pork tissues, anyone who has a pork allergy or a cultural objection to using pork products should not take cerebralycin. Also, if you have an unstable seizure disorder or any sort of severe kidney impairment, cerebralycin should not be used. If you or a loved one are considering cerebralycin as a treatment option, consult with a qualified healthcare professional to determine its suitability and safety for your specific need. As science advances, the quest for unlocking the full potential of the human brain remains such a fascinating journey, and with cerebralycin paving the way for new possibilities in the field of neuropharmaceuticals, this is just another peptide that we have in our arsenal. Thanks again for listening to the Peptide Podcast. We love having you as part of our community, and if you love this podcast, please share it with your friends and family on social media, and have a happy, healthy week.